It is an experience of a lifetime for a Colorado native set to head to the International Space Station later this evening. Now, U.S. Air Force Major Nicole Ayers is part of NASA's SpaceX Crew 10 and was selected for this mission back in 2021. So it's been a while. A Denver 7 Sam Pena is joining us from the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. And Sam Ayers made history here on Earth already. Mm -hmm. Now she's getting ready to go to outer space. Yeah, good morning, Nicole Anusha. We're very excited about Ayer's flight, which is happening tonight. And I'm joined actually right now by Dr. Kachun Yu. Dr. Kachun, you are the space science curator here. Tell us a little bit about, you know, the pride that you're feeling right now seeing a Colorado woman go to space. Well, I think it's really exciting, you know, for all Coloradans. Um, to, to, I mean, we've had past um, astronauts from Colorado or, or who have connections to, to Colorado mm -hmm. going up into, sp into space. But to see another one is, you know, it's great to see. Absolutely. And tell us a little bit about what her life is going to look like once she makes it to the International Space Station and a little bit about what her mission is going to look like. Yeah, well, I think uh, once you get on board the International Space Station, it does take you know, a day or two to acclimate because, you know, zero gravity or microgravity is a very unusual type of experience to be in. Um, people have to get their space legs, uh, uh, so they say. Um, but from um, what I understand, I mean, I don't know exactly what experiments um, she'll be focusing on, but an astronaut's day is packed. You know, they um, typically, um, from um, when, when they wake um, to when they go to bed, it's filled with experiments, um, you know, eating, but, but also um, um, they typically do uh, two hours of exercise each day to um, keep up mm -hmm. the muscle and bone mass. So um, they're, they're definitely busy and they have a lot to do. Absolutely. And you know, we're talking as well about some 200 tech demonstrations she's going to mm -hmm. be conducting up there. What is the future of space flight looking right now for the United States? Well, you know, part of the reason why we do spend, uh, send astronauts up, up into space is to um, into the International Space Station is to study how humans can work and live in space. Because, um, you know, currently um, NASA is planning to send astronauts back to the moon and eventually to Mars as well. And so to undergo um, these long term missions, we have to be able to understand how to keep astronauts safe um, and, um, and to allow them to survive um, and, and in space. And so that's what a lot of these experiments on board the space station is about. Absolutely. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. We haven't been to the moon since 1972, but that Artemis II mission, hopefully we'll be able to get us there, Nicole and Anusha. Wow, All best right. of luck to her. How incredible. Amazing. Can't wait to watch that launch. And while you're looking up at the sky, you could see a total lunar eclipse late tomorrow night into Friday morning. It's the first to be visible across the U.S. in nearly three years. A total eclipse happens when the moon is full and aligns perfectly with the Earth and sun, making it a striking red color like this image here. Of course, we're hoping for um, a cloud-free sky to watch that tomorrow night. Lisa, how's it looking? Uh, Not so good. <laughs> hope away, sister. Hope away. Uh, yeah. Uh, we are going to see increasing clouds, unfortunately, tomorrow night into Friday morning as we're tracking this next storm.